so start faking it. Well, let me introduce Artie. I'm sure everybody knows Dr. Artie Dean. Most of you know him as a periodontist. I've known Artie for a very long time, at least 30 years, uh, maybe even longer. Yeah, more longer than that. Um, and uh, I didn't know he was a hypnotist, so I'm really excited to hear your talk. And uh, we're all looking forward to it. So thank you so much for doing this, Artie. Okay, it's my pleasure. Uh, can you hear me all right? Is the volume okay? Good. Okay. So, so I'm gonna mute everybody if you. Okay. So um, we have a, uh, you know, we have a large variety of people, uh, backgrounds, people, you know, I see a number of people in the medical profession. So, um, you know, I will qualify this by telling you that there are so many different aspects of hypnosis that it, um, you know, it, that if I leave off something that, you know, um, you know, I don't want you to be offended. I'm trying to make it uh, sort of an, uh, an engaging talk tonight and maybe do a little experimenting and role playing with you to, uh, to be helpful. Um, as Kathleen said, I'm, a, I'm actually a dentist, a periodontist. So really my entire life, uh, my professional life, I have spent uh, both giving pain and trying to take it away. And a lot of what I do because I'm a periodontist is surgical with tooth extractions and uh, dental implants. And so that aspect of my practice, people are very often, people are very frightened. They come in, even, you know, even the most stoic looking person, you know, they're, they're talking to me calmly. And then I look down at their hands and their hands are white and they're gripping the chair. And they're really, you know, it's very obvious that it's nerve, that they're nervous. Some people hide it. And some people, it's very much on the surface. So I'm telling you this because that is that aspect of my life got me interested in what can I possibly do to relax people, um, you know, both for their benefit so they can get through the procedure without giving themselves a heart attack <clears throat> and for my benefit so that I can treat them calmly and not have ulcers and not that I wouldn't get a heart attack. So from the very beginning, I actually sort of modified a technique um, that I had heard, uh, you know, somewhere else. It was actually, a, you know, so it was actually a show at the Concord Hotel where the person induced people from the, from the, from the audience. Now, I, anybody who really practices as a hypnotist usually does not do a show. That's for entertainment. It's not for, for medical reasons. What I'm going to talk about tonight is really for medical, for medical purposes and how it can be helpful for stress uh, reduction, that type of thing. But I, I co-opted some of that material. I had no formal training in hypnosis, but from, from many years ago, so I would start to bring people in to my room and instead of going right to work, I would say, you know, are you, are you uh, a little bit on edge today? And they go, yes. So I would take a step back and I would do some breathing techniques. Very simple. I would just say, I'm going to just have you relax a little bit. I want you to take a nice deep breath. I'm going to count and you take four deep, slow breaths. And now I want you to imagine you're somewhere nice on a beach. You see, anyway, not to go through the whole thing, but I would talk to them. And after about five minutes of this, they would relax and they would say, okay, go ahead. And they would still be a little tense. I wouldn't say it's perfect and it didn't work for everybody, but it definitely was an improvement about than just going about my work. So I, I very early learned that what I said was very important and certain things that I said could have a great effect on people's physiological condition. Not just that they hide over it, they would actually, I would see them physically relax. So I did that maybe for 35 years, just basically spending five minutes relaxing people. And I found that if I did that, that it was more effective than giving laughing gas. Laughing gas would be a pain in the neck for me. Patients would say, 
are you sure this is on? I'm not really relaxed yet. Or, you know, they would say, I'm claustrophobic, take this off. You know, nitrous oxide is a sedation technique where they breathe in uh, nitrous oxide and oxygen. Anyway, so I, you know, found that it was very helpful and that was sort of as far as it went. And then approximately two years ago, I had nothing to do on a Sunday and I decided I'm going to go to the Waterford Library. This is interesting. There's a hypnotist speaking about hypnotism and he was a, he was a certified hypnotist. There are actually, what I found out later because I got trained, there are training boards and exams for hypnotists and there's a licensing uh, uh, that, that you can get. And I decided, well, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check it out and see what it's like. So I went and it was fascinating. And he hypnotized someone from the audience to, to who talked about their fears and he did it right in front of me. And I said, this is fascinating. I went up to him afterwards and I said, so I found this really wonderful. And I'm wondering if you would be willing to get involved with my patients and come and do hypnotism for the patients in my office. And then I would do the surgical work. And he said, no, I, I don't think I can do that. I don't have the time to do that. But, he, but then he looked me in the eye and he said, but I'm giving a certification course starting next month. And he tapped me on the shoulder. You should take my course. You should take my course. You should take my course. And I went home and I was thinking about it the whole way home. And I went to my wife. I'm going to take his course. I'm going to take his course. It was only later, so I signed up. It was a six month course. We met every week and we had you know, all sorts of work and we did clinical uh, experiment, you know, work with people. And during that session, those sessions with him, I realized that he really had hypnotized me to a certain extent. And his technique of tapping me on the shoulder, take my course, take my course, take my course, had done something to me, even though I wasn't in a trance, he had put a suggestion in my mind, take my course, take my course. So I did take his course. I learned a lot, um, but I tell you this story because it illustrates that what hypnosis really is all about. And that is a suggestion and it's a suggestion that can be made for someone who's in a very relaxed state. And that's kind of the basis of it because people really do not fully understand exactly what hypnosis is. It's different than meditation. It's different than, you know, some people feel like prayer is, um, is, is sort of a hypnotic state. It's different than mind, mild, mindfulness in that another person is guiding you in something that you would like to do or something that you would like to change. To do that, there are certain techniques which I'll maybe, we'll do a little bit of today, tonight, um, but the, the techniques are there to get per, a person into a very focused mindset, listening to a voice or a sound um, and then giving them a suggestion for their benefit. So when it's used in medical, so, uh, situations and for therapeutic situations, the whole idea of it is that you want to be able to achieve something else with the hypnosis. It's not for a show, it's not for fun, it's to achieve something. So what I learned from my studies is that not only can I relax somebody for four or five minutes and then say, okay, you ready to go and, and then do my work? but I could develop a technique where I could talk to them the entire time that they were with me. And I could talk, put them in a much, much deeper situation. Hypnotists call it a trance. There are all sorts of different levels of that. Uh, it's scary to some people in the public, so it's better to just say deep relaxation. And so from now on, I'm gonna sort of use the words hypnotism and and deep relaxation interchangeably because in the media 
and in shows, people have seen that and, you know, they think of Svengali, they think of Mesmer, they think of, you know, maybe a, a, a hypnotism show where people were turned into chickens and made fools of themselves and, the, you know, so this is not that. And that's not what I was trained to do, although I probably could do a little bit of it with some of the te techniques, but, you know, the, the, there's a, you know, a large group of um, professional hypnotists out there who would be very insulted about the idea of, of them doing a show. And they, they have a journal. Um, I studied with, it's called the National Guild of Hypnotists. They certify you. Um, so, you know, there are many people out there who put up a shingle and say hypnotist. You know, I don't know exactly what training they have. Um, but I try to do it in a very uh, educational way and then practice and then brought it into my, the use of my, in my office. And um, so when you use it to relax on some, somebody and, and a little bit, maybe we will uh, do it for those who are willing to just go into a deep relaxation technique, you can use it from many sources. You, the cornerstone of using it in medical um, treatments is usually stress reduction and stress management. And many of the other things that flow from there start with stress management. So if you can relax someone through breathing and a variety of techniques that we'll, we'll touch on, then you can get them up to a place where you actually can help them with something else. And I'm not a psychiatrist, but uh, or a psychologist, but there is a psychological aspect of it, and some people use use it as a behavioral technique. I'm sure you've all heard of people who go to a hypnotist for weight management um, to stop smoking. It's very good for things like that because as after you're relaxed in the deep relaxation technique, the person then gives you a um, a suggestion that you repeat. And by doing it again and again, it becomes what we call auto hypnosis. So that what, what's really happening in these situations is the hypnotist is not really doing anything to you except guiding you into something that you normally can do. The human being has the ability to go into various levels of trance, deep relaxation, all on their own. But over the centuries, people have discovered that there are techniques that can be used to guide them, to take them deeper, and then um, to use that hypnosis to the person's advantage. I'll give you an example. If you find yourself driving, and you're driving along, and you're thinking about something else that happened, and you're sort of not paying attention, and then you arrive at work or you arrive at home and you realize you have not really noticed anything in those 20 minutes that it took you to get to that spot. But somehow part of your brain was able to guide you there. And you're just in a focused situation thinking of something else. That is a form of what we're talking about. That idea of being totally, totally focused on something that you put everything out out of your cognition. Another example would be you go to a movie. The movie is great. You're watching it. It's fascinating. It's your favorite people. And you're listening, you're listening. And then somebody is talking to you. They're standing like right next to you. They're talking to you. You don't really hear them. You are either deeply attentive, whatever you want to call it. It is a form of what the hypnotist does. It, he, he distracts you. And then he puts, you know, puts suggestions to you. Um, I use the techniques to manage people who are very nervous instead of giving them laughing gas or instead of giving them sedation or pills. I find much more effective to actually talk to them and put them into deep, a deep state of relaxation. The first time I did it after I got trained, I, I, I was nervous. And I said, oh, this is like probably not gonna work, you know? And I could not believe the effect 
I almost laughed because I, as I went through the technique, there's part of the technique is you reach out for a door in your imagination, the door to the control room of your mind. And as I was speaking and getting ready to give the person the injection, I said, and you reach out and you look for the lever to reduce your stress. And I, their arm went out and I thought, what are they doing? And they reached out and they turned the knob. And I said, whoa, this stuff really works. And as I've used it over the last, well, I, unfortunately I stopped working for a while. I plan to go back once I get um, the vaccine. So I took a sabbatical, but up to the time I took the sabbatical from my work, I was using it almost every day, a couple of times. And again, finding it much more effective. So I'm gonna do some things with you today um, for fun and just sort of to help you also with the stress relaxation, because that is, that is like the best thing about hypnosis. You can use it just to, you know, for tension. You can use it for insomnia. I, I, and you can use it for chronic pain. Those are probably the most common things, but people use it for headaches. They use it for, uh, irritable bowel, bowel syndrome, any, anything that you can think of where and, uh, stress and anxiety plays a role in making your symptoms worse can be modified by modifying the brain. That is the basics of trying to use hip, uh, hypnosis, deep relaxation for medical purposes to improve your life. It's that you want to be able to modify the, the signals that are coming into the brain. So let's say for instance, let's say we're talking about uh, stress. The original fight or or flight um, that we all hear about that's the that's the that's something that was ingrained into our DNA like millions of years ago. The idea that a pterodactyl is going to come and either it's going to eat the organism um, or you're gonna you better run away. So that was a very adaptive thing, but in modern life. There's very rare times where you have to run from a predator that's after you. I mean, it does happen, but very often that fight or flight feeling of, of tension, of nervousness, of like, ah, oh, where your blood pressure is soaring, your heart is pounding, you're sweating, you feel like you might pass out. All those things are hardwired in our DNA, but are activated now by things that, that should not give you that feeling. So you're listening to the news, and I'm not going to talk about any political leanings. You're listening to the news. They're getting you all worked up. Either it's the pandemic or it's the political scene. Your tension, your tension, you feel so aggravated. You're so aggravated. If you took your blood pressure, it'd be like 30 points higher than it should be. We're all living in this incredibly stressful place. Well, that could be modified by pills. It could be modified um, by taking like laughing gas, which nobody has the access to outside of a dental office or a medical office. But it also can be modified by things you can do with your own brain, either self, self relax, relaxation techniques, or if somebody does it, a therapist does it for you. Um, I shouldn't ever ever say the word therapist because I was taught that although I'm medically trained, at, at, you know, as a dental specialist, I am actually in my hypno, hypnosis training supposed to call myself a consulting hypnotist when I when I offered to do that. So not a therapist because that's a psychotherapist. So I people who do that can call themselves consulting hypnotist. So getting back to what we were talking about, this fight or flight wreaks havoc on us, makes us tense. We have stress hormones pouring out, leads to chronic disease, leads to chronic pain. People who have injuries or nerve problems in their back, things that have already healed, but the chronic pain continues, is made so much worse by the stress that that brings. So for some people, when they have painful conditions, it just continues on and on. After six months, everything looks good on x-rays, on every evaluation that a physician can do, but people still have pain. 
In my field, it's TMJ, temporomandibular joint. I see hundreds of patients a year. That's part of my specialty. And they have chronic headaches from grinding of the teeth. They're tense. You could, you could stone them out with drugs, but you know, then they can't function. You know, sometimes we give them dental appliances and that's very helpful to, for some, but some people, they need overall stress reduction. And that's where the hypnotism now comes in, the deep relaxation. So now as an adjunct to everything else I do, I will give them a tape and I will show them how to relax and do deep relaxation. It doesn't cost you anything to do it. And they're not drugged out. And I think many people uh, are helped by a, lot, by a lot. And then I give them a, a, a subconscious suggestion to hold their jaw loose. So that could be that can be in any other field. You can tell people to keep their stomach loose. You know, if they have irritable bowel, if they have um, uh, headaches, you can relax them and try to have their headaches away. I have used it for acute pain for myself because I had two knee replacements uh, about a year ago, and I had already been trained. I made tapes for myself so that when I woke up in pain in the middle of the night, I hypnotized myself to go back to bed using these tapes. Um, my own mother, who may or may not be on here by listening, my own mother broke her neck um, and was in the hospital and I was actually in a hyp hypnosis convention and I was called away. I came, came down to the hospital. I left the, the, um, the course, I left the hospital she was in agony. They couldn't give her any more morphine because an older person cannot use morphine, uh, you know, beyond a certain point because it uh, subdues breathing. So I said, what the heck? I, I, I've just been through this course. I said, mom, would you like me to hypnotize you? And what mother wouldn't agree to something her son wanted to do for her? So she wanted me to. And I did it. And just like I told you in the dental office where I was like stupefied, I couldn't believe it. She fell asleep and she woke up and she said she felt better. And when it, when it started to be painful again, I hypnotized her again. She kept on going in and out of consciousness. And I kept on, and, and she reported to me always that it, she felt better. She felt calm. She wasn't as, you know, a lot of being in the hospital makes you anxious. So it was very helpful in that way. So she will of course agree because what mother wouldn't kind of back up her son. But I, I, I truly believe that it was helpful to her. I've done things I've, uh, for family members. Um, when I was first learning, I would do it with medical professionals who I was friendly with and we'd be on the beach or some other place and said, you won't believe what I'm learning to do. Would you like to see it? Is it I can't be hypnotized. That stuff doesn't work on me. And I would say, okay, you want to try? And then I would sit next to them in the chair and I would go through it. And before I knew it, they would like close their eyes. And, and it wasn't asleep, but they would be, you know. So, so it comes down to that most people, the majority of people can go into a light hypnosis. Uh, maybe 20% can only go light. Maybe another 30% can go moderately deeper where, um, where maybe they even can have pain control for it. And then maybe like another 20% can go so deep that you can perform surgical procedures on them without anesthesia. I don't mess around with that. I would much rather get somebody so relaxed that they let me give them some uh, local anesthetic. Um, because I don't want to rely on it totally, but I've seen it and I know it works. And people people do uh, have claimed they can even do an appendectomy. It's very common in China to do this with acupuncture. So anyway, there's a lot of things out there that are, you know, if you told me 20 years ago I'd be like dabbling with this, I would I would say you're crazy. But I have found in my own hands how effective it is, and and. And, you know, with a little bit of training. So if you are willing to go into this relaxation uh, 
with me, then uh, I'm, I'm going to do it for the Zoom audience. Uh, I am not going to like hypnotize you and give you any kind of like suggestion, except maybe we're going to use it just as stress relief. We were all stressed out by the news and by other things in our life. So just maybe to be able to come up with a trick to, um, to lower the stress. So we'll do that. So um, Artie, Artie, before, Artie, excuse me, before you go forward, um, I just want to switch back to gallery view and see if there's anybody that does not want to do this. Well, that was Is what there I was anybody that's concerned that's, Anybody who doesn't want to listen could either turn down the volume or I spoke to Ella. She can put you in a separate room. It'll probably last about 10, 12 minutes. Um, yeah, we're, we can't do through. the separate room. I've been talking with her as well and uh, we can't figure out how to do the breakout room. So, um, so uh, I, it doesn't look like anybody objects. So. If anybody feels uncomfortable, you could just raise your hand. Okay. If you find that you're, for any reason you don't want to listen, just turn down your volume, volume then. All, all right. Get yourself, and also the other thing would be that it's later in the evening. So a lot of people do fall asleep later in the evening. Hypnosis, like we said before, is not sleep. When people do brain studies, they find that the brain waves on EEG of, of somebody who's in hypnosis, the brain waves are the same as someone who is awake. Think of it more as focused attention, complete focused attention for, for a purpose, but it's not sleep. Um, however, when you're, it's in the evening and you're relaxed, sometimes people do actually fall asleep and then you won't hear me anymore. It won't be any more dangerous than you watching television and falling asleep while you're watching the television. But, but do get yourself in a comfortable spot so that if you dozed off, you're not gonna fall forward or anything like that. Get yourself comfortable. So for our purposes today, get yourself into a very comfortable spot. We're gonna be talking about a technique that you can use just to relax yourself, just to make yourself comfortable. And I want you to put your hands in your lap or at your side, anything that's comfortable is fine. And I'm going to teach you to take a deep cleansing breath, which some of you know um, uh, about, about taking a deep cleansing breath. They're called the abdominal breaths. And let me see if I can stand up. And what I want you to practice is put your, Dominant hand, whether you're a right or you're a left, you put your dominant hand on your belly. And I want you to ta imagine taking a very deep, slow breath and expanding your belly as if you had a balloon in it. And as you breathe, hold it for three seconds and then slowly let it out for three seconds. And again, expanding your belly, slowly breathing in, slowly letting it out. Again, three seconds in, hold it, then slowly let it out. As an aside, the vagus nerve runs through the diaphragm. What you're really doing is expanding and stimulating your vagus nerve, which stimulates certain hormones in your brain, which are tremendously beneficial. And anybody who does meditation knows the power of the cleansing breath. You're actually releasing endorphins and you're release, releasing serotonin and melatonin, all things that help sleep, help anxiety, uh, stress, and um, uh, are, are, are generally very beneficial. So let's continue on now. And again, I want you, just as I taught you, I want you to take a deep breath, holding it for three seconds, slowly let it out. Let's practice that together. Deep breath, hold it for three seconds and slowly let it out. And deep breath 
and hold it for three seconds and slowly let it out. And as you continue to breathe in this way, I want you to just concentrate on my voice. And I want you to imagine yourself in a very safe place. It could be a place of your childhood. It could be a place that you go to in the summer. For many people, it's a beach. For some people, it's a garden. Whatever it is, whatever makes you feel safe and happy and enjoyable, imagine yourself sitting in that place as you continue to breathe deep and slow. And let's say you imagine yourself on a beach. It's a beautiful day, maybe. Artie, you're frozen. Oh, go ahead. Thank on, you. On, on every number, I want you to imagine that your eyelids are growing heavy and relaxed, just extremely relaxed. And on each number, they'll feel a little bit more relaxed until eventually on three, if you feel like it, you can close before. But on three, we'll have everybody, I'll ask everybody to just close your eyes. One, you breathe deep and you imagine your eyelids getting heavy and relaxed those eyelids that do so much work, staying open all day. Two, they get even more heavy. They feel more, more heavy. And three, they're so heavy, you just let them close. And even if you don't feel the heaviness, you just let them close for our purposes. And as you breathe deep and slow, I want you to imagine yourself on that safe place in the beach, or in the garden, where it ever feels comfortable to you. When you imagine yourself sitting there, maybe you hear birds singing, maybe you hear the crash of the waves, whatever makes you feel comfortable, you think of that, you imagine it. Maybe you even smell the salt air. You breathe deep, you feel so, so relaxed and you continue to breathe deep and slow. And as you breathe deep and slow, imagining these thoughts, you let that heavy feeling, that relaxed feeling in your eyes spread to the muscles around your face. You just let it happen. For our purposes, you just let it happen. You let your jaws feel relaxed. You feel that heaviness and relaxation as you breathe, going right into your jaw and spreading down into your neck. You imagine what that would feel. Well, how that would feel. You imagine the heaviness and the good feeling going into your neck, spreading into your shoulders. You imagine those shoulders that work so hard, they feel loose, they feel limp. And almost like a wave, you imagine that relaxation flowing down into your arms, down into your elbows from your elbows down into your forearms and down into your wrist. And it spreads even into your hands and your fingers and all the way into your fingertips. And your arms feel so loose and relaxed. And you let that relaxation flow down also into your chest as you breathe deep and slow. And that heaviness, that relaxation flows from your chest down into your stomach, from your stomach down to your waist and your hips, and it feels delicious. And you let yourself enjoy it. This is supposed to be enjoyable and you let it flow down into your thighs, a wave of relaxation flowing down into your knees, into your shins, down into your ankles. You just let it happen. You go deeper and deeper relaxed and the relaxation flows into your feet and your toes and even to, your, to the tips of your toes. And now again, I want you to focus your attention on this beautiful scene where you are. And I want you to imagine that you see a series of footsteps 
going off to the end of the beach or the end of the garden. It's your choice, whatever you choose. And in the moment, I'm going to have you imagine that these footsteps lead to a door and that you have a tremendous curiosity. For our purposes, you're curious to see what's behind that door. And in your imagination, you rise up out of your comfortable chair and you follow these footsteps. And I'm going to count down from 10 to one to bring you to that door. And I want you to allow yourself to go deeper and deeper relaxed as we count down. Just letting yourself relax and feel comfortable and enjoying it. 10, you take a step in your imagination towards that door and you go double your relaxation. You just double it, you let it happen. You take another step nine, you go 10 times more relaxed, deeply, deeply relaxed, more relaxed than you've, perhaps you've been in a long time. You go to eight, seven, going towards that door, getting more and more relaxed as you walk, seven, six, five, four, Three, going deeper and deeper relaxed with every step. Two and one. And now you imagine yourself in front of the door. And there's a sign on the door. It says the control room of your mind. And you, your curiosity overwhelms you. You want to see what's in that control room to your own mind. And for the sake of using your imagination, you imagine that you're going to enter into that control room and see what's there. And you look at the door and there's a handle, there's a doorknob. Maybe it's glass, maybe it's metal, maybe brass, maybe wood. It doesn't matter, whatever you imagine. Whatever you imagine is fine. And in your imagination, I want you to imagine that you're going to reach out and take hold of that door. And in fact, if you feel like it, just reach out with your hand, just reach out with your hand and take hold of that door in your imagination, hold on to it and turn it, turn it to the right and imagine it opening and you step inside and you look around that room. And in that room, there are all sorts of buttons and levers and they represent the functions of your body. For the sake of using your imagination, you imagine that these levers represent the things that control your bodily functions. There's one for your digestion. That seems to be just about right. There's a, there's a lever for your blood pressure. That's about right. One is for your heartbeat, just right. And you know that all these things are things that we, our brain can control and our emotions control these things. But you glance off to the right and in your imagination, you imagine you see a lever that is labeled stress. And this one is way up high. And for some reason, this one is high and you know that that's not good. And so you imagine reaching over and in your imagination or you can do it yourself just now, you imagine you take hold of that lever. You wanna bring it down. You don't want your stress level to be high. And you try to pull it down, but it seems stuck. And you put a little more force and you pull it down ever so slowly and it starts to give. And as it gives and it comes down, you imagine that at the same time, you feel more deeply relaxed and positive. You feel relaxed. You feel even better. You lower it again and you imagine the corresponding reduction in your stress. You just let it happen. You have control, you lower it again, again, until you lower it all the way down. And you feel good about this. You feel good that you have some ability to control your bodily functions. And you feel a sense of well-being, and you feel satisfaction, you feel good. You feel relaxed, you feel comfortable. And if any time after today, you feel stressed out and overwhelmed by things that are happening, I want you to use this technique, either with deep breathing 
picturing yourself somewhere, visualizing yourself in a peaceful place. And you can even go into the control room. You can go into the control room of your own mind and lower your stress. And if you're in a place where you cannot use this technique, I want you to picture putting your thumb and your index finger together. And I want you to do it now physically, touch your thumb and your index finger together. And imagine that as you press that together, the lever of the stress will lower as well. And just picture that, picture what it would be to pinch your fingers together and allow that lever to come down, allow the stress level to come down. And in a moment, I'm going to put you back onto the beach or the garden, wherever you were. And we're gonna very gradually become alert again. But in the future, if you ever wanna go into this deep relaxation, you're gonna find it easier. You're gonna find it much easier. And you're going to be able to go into it longer and have a better effect. And if you see water tomorrow, at any time tomorrow, you're going to remember this technique and you're going to remember to relax yourself and feel calmer and feel comfortable. So in a moment, I'm gonna count from one to five and you will gradually become more and more alert. And when we, are, we do reach five, you will feel terrific. You will open your eyes and feel like you had a wonderful, wonderful rest, like you've been relaxing or, or dozing for hours. And you're gonna have a wonderful evening and tomorrow you're gonna have a wonderful day and feel full of energy and feel great. One, you're starting to become more alert. The energy is flowing back into your arms and your legs. Two, you're still feeling more alert. The energy flowing all around, coming back in. Three, you're, you're, you're halfway alert, you're halfway back. Four, you're pretty much all the way back there. You're coming around, you're coming around, you're comp almost completely alert. And five, you are completely alert and energized. If your eyes are closed, open your eyes. You can stretch if you want, you can relax. You can, um, Kathleen, you can unmute. So everybody will have to unmute themselves or you just want me to unmute. Oh, can you unmute everybody? I can't, they have to oh, unmute right. themselves. All right, so, so we'll, we'll have a period, we'll have a period of, we'll have a period of, uh, of discussion in a moment. I'll just, uh, I want to leave enough time for discussion. Hopefully, uh, I didn't see anybody laughing. I saw people nodding or relaxed. And I'll ask you in a little while how you felt. Um, all right, there is a, an echo. You can come back over here. So um, that what we just went through was just a deep relaxation technique with a suggestion for you to relax and to empower you to take some control over your abilities. Um, and to the extent that you use it, you can, you can use that as a tool. And it's just one of many ways to do this, but the whole idea is to relax and to feel more comfortable. Um, if we had more time or maybe in some future date, if anybody's interested, I can teach you to do self-hypnosis which is actually very, very powerful that not only can you do relaxation, but you can put a thought into your mind yourself, either to eat more healthy, or if I, you know, if somebody is a secret smoker here, we can, you can tell yourself to not smoke. Um, you can use it for anything. You can use it for chronic pain and you can tell yourself to get better and better and implant the thought in your mind. So, it's, it's, um, 
I've come to realize through doing this type of training and working with people, just how powerful it is. It's much more powerful than I ever imagined. Um, and that almost anything that will improve with stress reduction will, can, be, can be treated like this. Um, again, I don't bring in people into my dental office and tell them to stop smoking with this. I don't do weight management. I use it, I use it for medical reasons. I use it for chronic pain and headaches related to the jaw. Um, and I use it to help me, uh, you know, treat people uh, and keeping them in a, uh, you know, I do keep them in a trance sometimes if they do go, go in. Um, but having said that, there's, a, and this is just a smattering and a little bit of a taste of it. So uh, I, Ella thought that it would be a good idea to uh, leave time for questions. So maybe, maybe anybody who wants to talk about it or tell me what they felt or experienced, go ahead. Dr. Well, I felt I was drooling. <laughs> you said, oh, you felt you were drooling. <laughs> when yeah, you said drooling. relax your jaw, I was like... Uh... <clears throat> okay, did you have a lot of saliva? <laughs> I think I did before that. Okay, so that is actually part of, uh, part of deep relaxation. You know, again, I'm calling it deep relaxation, but you could call it a, a slight trance. But that's the first step is that you're... It's the parasympathetic effect. The fight or flight is sympathetic system and the, and uh -huh. the parasympathetic controls your organs and your salivary glands. So when you start to go in, you get, you get, you get juicy, you get more saliva and it's common to swallow. So okay. you're definitely experiencing it. Hmm. Yes. What if you're a skeptic like me? and don't believe you could be hypnotized. What do I do? Um, I don't do anything really. I, I, there are people who come to the office and say, this is not for me, I cannot do this. And I say, okay. Um, there is, it is only um, there as a technique for somebody who wants it and wants to, let's say, let's say we're just talking about relaxing. So if somebody, some people do not, are resistant. They do not want to. Did you call me? No. Oh, I thought you called me. No, I was... Somebody got to be muted. But so some people are resistant and don't want to do it. And the biggest mistake would be to try to fight with that person. The only thing you can do is make them feel comfortable that you know what you're doing and you're not going to do anything to hurt them. But there are people who have said to me, I cannot be hypnotized. The next thing I know, their eyes are closing and they, and they, you know, and they say, um, you know, that they were definitely out and they definitely loved it. And when can we do it again? Um, but it's not a hundred percent thing, no matter how great a hypnotist might be. And the, no, ma no matter how many years of experience they might have far more than me, there are a certain number of people that just cannot, can, you know, cannot, uh, go into that state. And there are other people that can go into such a deep state that they can be made to feel that their hand is, is numb and that you could do hand surgery on them while talking to them and keeping them in a trance. So it's just there. It's just there. There are also some people who, you know, they take a sedative and said, it made me excited. I, I, it didn't, you know, it didn't make me calm. It made me agitated. So, you know, there Yes, Harriet. So that is what I'm curious about. Are there any studies that suggest why some people can be deeply hypnotized and others cannot? Yes. Well, I'm so glad that you asked me because I have here a medical journal that's actually called the uh, American Psychological Association. So I think it just has to do with people accepting things so, some people will accept things more be more open to suggestion um uh i'll read to you what th they did a big analysis of many many st research studies say they say hypnosis is likely to be effective for most people suffering from diverse forms of pain with the possible exception of a minority of patients who are resistant 
to hypnotic interventions. Hypnosis is a set of techniques designed to enhance concentration, minimize one's usual distractions, and heighten responsiveness to suggestions to alter one's thoughts, feelings, behavior, or physiological state. Hypnosis is not a type of psychotherapy. It also is not a treatment in and of itself. Rather, it is a procedure that can be used to facilitate other types of therapies and treatments. People differ in the degree to which they respond to hypnosis. The key to becoming hypnotized is the extent to which a person is hypnotizable, which is a very reliable and stable individual reference uh, trait that indexes one's openness to hypnotic suggestions. So basically what I'm saying, it's you, it's not me. If you are able to if you were able to go into relaxation, let's call it, it's for, because your mind is able to do it. If you're, if you're not, it's not that the person who was trying to do it for you was bad. It's that, you know, you're just, you're just not made that way. And, and it's interesting, supposedly, the more intelligent you are, the easier it is to do. Um, <laughs> People who are, have very, very low IQs cannot be hypnotized. Children under four can't be hypnotized. Very religious people can be hypnotized uh, more easily. And, and people who are used to wearing uniforms and authority, like a fireman, a policeman, uh, uh, an armed, somebody in the armed forces, you would think that they're, they wouldn't be able to be hypnotized, but supposedly they're very good at it at it because they're used to taking on somebody's authority. So that may be part of it also. You, if, you, if you have someone, he's your best friend, he's sitting on the beach next to you and he says, you wanna try hypnosis? And you say, ah, that'll never work. It's because you know the person, you go, let's say, and you, sp you pay them $200 to, to, to rid you of a painful headache and you come into their office and you believe them because they have a jacket, a title, you know. So some, some of it is believable. If you put your belief in somebody, they can do it. Uh, not to denigrate, you know, all those people who are doing hypnotism out there to great effect. I think people who in ancient times performed miracles like shamans um, who sort of cure people of diseases, uh, it's a form of hypnotism, I think, People who, uh, who walk across coals in India while in a trance, it, it's hypnotism. Mesmer, who was like maybe the most famous uh, hypnotist, maybe in 1700s, uh, you heard the word mesmerized. He was mesmerized by something. Well, that came from Mesmer and he, he great, uh, gained great notoriety of, of curing uh nobles in France um, of, of their ailments. But then he was debunked and he lost, he lost face. And I think maybe the idea of hypnotism has not fully recovered from that idea that it's, a, you know, it's hokey. But if you go into any hospital now, they will offer you integrative medicine. They don't call it hypnotism. They say, you know, you're going to have a, a, an abdominal operation and instead of giving you like a lot of morphine, would you be open to also having integrative medicine? And if you say yes, somebody comes in and usually it's a nurse trained in these things. And they'll say, you know, they'll teach you meditation. They'll teach you deep breathing. They might even do something like what I did. They might let, let you listen to music with the idea of modifying your reaction to pain. And that's kind of all what we're doing, you know. And the people who are resistant to it, Take the narcotic, you know, don't even like think about it, you know, but there are side effects and there are people out there who have chronic pain, can't take, you can't take narcotics day after day without becoming addicted. So this is just another thing in their bag. And I think kind of doctors are being trained more and more uh, with this type of thing because people are demanding it. They're not just foisting it on people. People want alternative medicine. People don't want medications. People want to determine their own care. People want to like look on the internet and say, why should I, you know, why should I go to uh, uh, an orthopedist? I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do deep meditation and cure myself. I'm not saying that that would work, 
but people are doing all sorts of things for themselves. Uh, any, anyway, anybody else? How yeah. do you how do you actually hypnotize one's how does one hypnotizes oneself? You say uh, that you make yourself take yourself tapes. Um, uh, is that, is well, that the only way? I'll, I'll quickly give you the rundown of how, let's say, you would do auto hypnosis. Uh, normally, we would talk about that for like an hour, but the idea behind it would be that you start off, let's say for a week before you go to bed, just before you go to bed, you say to yourself, every day I am getting, every day I'm getting better and better. Every day I'm getting better and better. And you count on your fingers so you don't fall asleep. And you, you do it 10 times and you put down one finger, every day I'm getting better and better. Every day I'm getting better and better. And you, you repeat this to yourself 10 times. You do this for a week. Then after that time, you would put yourself into deep breathing situations similar to what um, I have described. And you would get yourself into a deep relaxation technique, either with breathing or any of the many techniques. Sometimes it's as simple as counting backwards from 20 down to one and breathing 20 times. And then you would say something that you want your, your subconscious to, to remember, like, I don't want to smoke tomorrow, or I don't want to get mad at my significant other tomorrow, or I don't want to eat those yeah. chocolates that are hidden in the closet. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you say that to yourself over and over. So instead of saying every day I'm getting better and better, you implant this idea in your mind. And let's say you do it in the morning, and at night, and you would you would say this. So my wife wanted me to eat better. So I used to go swimming every day. Now, now with COVID, I don't go swimming, but I used to swim in the pool. And as I would swim, I would say to myself with my breathing, I would say, I will eat right. I will eat better. I will be healthy. I will eat right. I will feel better. I will be healthy because I was experimenting with myself. And I lost about six pounds, but as soon as I stopped swimming and saying that to myself, I gained it all back. <laughs> but it was an attempt. It was an attempt to improve yourself. Dan. Yeah, a fab fabulous overview, Artie. To, to Harriet's question, is there any sort of measure of hypnotizability? A college classmate of mine is a psychiatry professor at Stanford and with his hypnotist father, he wrote a textbook and there's something they call an eye roll test where you sort of f see how far up you, I don't understand it exactly. I asked him to administer it to me at our last college reunion. And he said, no, you're not that hypnotizable. <laughs> and I know how hypnotizable I am. I love it. I look forward to it. I find it relaxing. It helped me lose weight. And, um, so I think there's also, there's both a neurologic basis and then a motivational basis. Uh, I really want it. I, when I first was hypnotized, it was because I was scared because I was pre-diabetic mm -hmm. and there's no history of diabetes in my family. Uh, and so I very much wanted it, even though I was very skeptical, I didn't think it would work. We were in an auditorium of 300 people. It worked. It, it's, it's absolutely miraculous. Even if we don't know how it works, it's, it's amazing. So Thank you to you and your colleagues. Barbara, Barbara wants to give a testimonial. I used to have a chronic cough for a very long time. And it wasn't completely a habit, but it, it would start like if I ate too fast or I drank something too cold or I have allergies and reflux and all these different reasons why I coughed. So there wasn't like any one solution. Um, Artie, hypnotized me many times and gave me um, like the post hypnotic, um, what do you call it? Suggestion. Suggestion that I was gonna cough less and it worked. It worked more than any allergy med, any reflux med and I tried everything and it really worked. So now if I, you know, choke or cough, I can cough like a normal person and stop coughing. It doesn't like just become this whole huge, I mean, I used to cough so bad, I broke a rib coughing once. So this was very important to me to get it under control. And Artie helped me more than any of the doctors. 
So that's my testimonial. <laughs> that's pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Artie, that was really interesting. Um, I never knew this about you before, and it was really a very fascinating overview of the subject. And thank All right. You. Well, if you ever want to go to the next step or do more, because I think we only <laughs> sort of did the surface, and you want to, if you're interested to learn uh, self-hypnosis, you know, and you, if you want me to come back, that's what I'll do. Great. Thank you so much. My Greatly pleasure. appreciate it. <laughs> nice to see you all. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thanks for your attention. Dan, I have a question for you. <laughs> yes. Hypnosis. <laughs> yeah. You didn't know how to do hypnosis then. It's, no, I, it's just naturally charming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hypnosis is so amazing why isn't it um the magic solution for psychotherapy because it generally put generally psychological work. no it, i i have recommended people who are in psychotherapy with me i have referred them to hypnotists for as already described more circumscribed issues right but oftentimes oh, if people if people come with complex relational issues, um, that's that's or, or post-traumatic issues, that's not as easy. But I think hypnosis can be used in addition to psychotherapy. Um, Artie helped me with a, a, a experiential issue that really? still was bothering me after many years of psychotherapy. Um, so I don't think it has to be an either-or thing. And I think there's still so much we don't know about it and so many applications it potentially has. Mm -hmm. The main thing is you really have to want it. Asked earlier, I think, was it Ira who said, I can't be hypnotized? If you really, really want it, like me, apparently neurologically, I'm not that sensitive to hypnosis. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> when, Artie, when Artie puts me into a trance, I'm out. And uh, when I was hypnotized years ago to eat more intelligent, he didn't even say that. I don't even know. I don't even know what he did on his CD that he played for 300 people. Uh, but it made a huge difference. So uh, I, I would love to hear more from Artie. And I want to learn more about the self-hypnotic technique. So I, I would vote for that. But does that answer your question, Ella? Um, yeah, I guess so. Okay, I'm we thinking... can talk more about it. Give me a holler. I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain more. Um, but yeah. I think it can be used with psychotherapy. And I'd like to see Artie hypnotize me. And I've seen it many times in shows, but I'm still a skeptic. <laughs> That's but, all right, yeah, Ira. I think you're resistant to it, Ira. If you're resistant to it, you absolutely won't be hypnotized. Okay? But if you welcome it and embrace it, then that greatly increases the chance that you will be. But you have to want it. And I, I want it, <laughs> even if I'm not neurologically susceptible. I want hey, it. Ira, Ira, I would invite you into my home, maybe after we were all vaccinated, because if you tried to come in now, no. <laughs> <laughs> I need periodontal work, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, maybe I'll be open in a couple of months. And let's hope we all get the vaccine and... Go back to a more normal life. Right. Stay Thank healthy, you. everybody. Stay healthy. Thank you, Artie. Thank, Thank you, you all for your attention. Yep. Thanks so much, Artie. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye.